Okay, hi there, welcome to a micro revision video. Uh, in this video, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about the key factors affecting market supply of goods and services. Uh, we'll look at the concept of joint supply, and then we'll work through a small selection of past multiple choice questions. So supply is defined as the quantity or the volume of a good or service that the supplier or the producer is willing and able to supply to the market at a given price in each time period. The law of supply is that as the price of a product goes up, perhaps because there's been an outward shift of demand, so businesses look to expand their production. Higher prices provide a profit incentive for businesses to increase production. And when it comes to the profit incentive, please look at our separate video on the price mechanism. Now, a supply curve shows a, a relationship between the market price and how much a firm is willing and able to sell. And price and quantity supplied are usually positively related. If we think about this simple table, the quantity that uh, producers are willing and able to sell at goes up uh, as the price goes up. They might be only willing to sell one unit at 40 pence, but uh, and four units at 90p and six units at one pound fifty. Because, of course, in theory, they're going to get a higher revenue and profit from selling more. Demand, of course, works the other way. Uh, as the units go up, if we assume diminishing utility, diminishing marginal utility, the price the consumer is willing to pay for the good diminishes. The equilibrium here, of course, is at uh, five units, where the price is one pound. So here is a standard linear in other words, straight line, upward sloping supply curve for a product. Uh, in this case, the supply of beef at changing price levels. Shifts in supply are caused by changes in the conditions of supply. So, oh, so we need to go back to uh, slide here. So crucially, the idea is that as the price goes up, there's an expansion up the supply curve. As the price goes down, there's a contraction down the supply curve. Producers responding to changes in the price. But shifts in supply are caused by changes in the conditions of supply. In other words, the non-price factors affecting the ability of producers to supply to the market at each price. In this case here, S1 has shifted outwards to S2. We call that an increase in supply. And that can be caused by factors such as a fall in the cost of production, a rise in productivity, or perhaps more suppliers entering the market. Here we see an inward shift or a fall in supply from S1 to S3, uh, meaning that at the same price level, P1, less can be supplied to the market. We call that a fall in supply. And again, that one of the causes there could be an increase in the costs, the unit costs of supply of production, or perhaps a government tax on producers. Now, it's vital to use language and terminology appropriately and correctly. So a change in the price of a product, in this case beef, leads to an extension or contraction along the supply curve. In other words, a change in the price leads to a change in the quantity supplied. Any change in a non-price factor leads to a change or a shift in supply at each and every price. The supply curve changes position. And here are some of the key conditions of supply. This slide will take you through lots of good examples. The most important factor is a change in the unit cost of production. So if the unit cost goes down, businesses can supply more at each price level. Conversely, if unit costs go up, uh, perhaps because of an increase in the wage rate or higher raw material prices, then there's a fall in supply. You can't supply as much at each price. The exchange rate is important for supply in many industries. A, a fall or depreciation in the exchange rate ordinarily causes an increase in the prices of imported components and raw materials, and that can cause a fall in supply. On the other hand, long-run improvements in production technology and innovation could cause an outward shift of supply. We can make more with less. The entry of new producers into the market causes an outward shift of supplies. New firms look to, to enter the market. In uh, many agricultural sectors, favourable climatic conditions can increase supply. On the other hand, of course, drought and flood uh, and other extreme weather events can, can cause significant disruptions to production. 
And then, of course, we know that government has a role to play in affecting supply. So indirect taxes on producers cause an inward shift of supply. A subsidy, financial support to a producer, causes an outward shift of supply because costs are going down. And if governments increase the burden of regulation, that usually increases costs, causing, causing an inward shift of supply. Take a moment, if you need to, to take a screenshot of this slide. It gives you the key, all the key variables in terms of shifts in market supply. Another concept we just need to spend a few minutes on is market supply. Now, market supply is the total supply brought to the market by producers at each price level. And to calculate it, we simply sum the individual supply schedules. An example is shown in the table here. So, for example, at market price £10, uh, firm A and firm C are willing to supply, and in total they're willing to supply 35 units. It's only when the price rises to £20 that firm B enters the market. Firm A and firm C will supply more, and in total, if my maths is correct, the three firms can supply 70. I hope that's right. I'm sure it is. And if the price goes up, then the existing firms in the market can supply more. I'm not going to add any more firms to the mix in this table, but as the price goes up from 30 to 40, supply expands because producers are willing and able to produce more. Now, supply is not necessarily the amount that's sold. Supply is what producers are willing and able to bring to market. But if consumers don't wish to buy the product, it's going to remain unsold. And therefore, we talk, we talk about the idea of, of stocks. My next concept in this little revision video is joint supply. Joint supply. Some examples appearing on the screen there. And joint supply is where an increase or decrease in the supply of one good leads to an increase or decrease in the supply of what's called a byproduct, a byproduct effect. <clears throat> Pardon me. So joint supply occurs when production yields two or more outputs, the main product, if you like, and the byproduct. And many examples occur within the livestock industry. So an expansion, for example, in beef production, the size of the beef herd goes up, that will ultimately lead to an increased supply of beef hides. A contraction in the market supply of lamb, as lamb herds uh, or stocks go down, might reduce <coughs> the supply of wool. So be aware of the idea of byproducts and joint supply. OK, let's round off this little revision video by asking or giving you a chance to check your understanding. Here are four past multiple choice questions, all related to the theory of supply. And when you get a chance, press the pause button and, uh, and have a go at the questions. Here's question one. The global market for tea is forecast to grow by 4.5% per year between 2019 and 2024. Meanwhile, which of these is the most likely cause of a shift to the left of the world supply for tea? Press the pause button and have a go at this question. So what is most likely to cause an inward shift or fall in the world supply curve for tea? Oh, well, the correct answer here is C, because wages is a very labour intensive industry in countries like certain Sri Lanka and Malawi. An increase in wages of tea pickers would reduce the, 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 increase the supply costs and therefore reduce supply. Uh, other factors, the well, falling price of tea causes a movement along the supply curve. Subsidies would reduce costs. Uh, cocoa is a substitute for tea in many people's eyes. That would more likely cause a shift in demand. Here's question number two. The diagram shows a supply curve for beef. Interesting. What explains why the supply curve for beef is upward sloping? What explains why that supply curve is non-linear, it's becoming steeper, more inelastic? What explains why the supply curve for beef is slopes upwards. Have a go at question number two. So what do we think for question number two? Why is there a, a more inelastic supply curve at higher levels of output? Well, the answer is that the marginal cost of additional beef production is going up. As you increase your production, it may well be the case that the extra costs associated with getting the extra beef to market is going up. And therefore, that's the main reason for the upward sloping supply curve. Here's question three. Have we got this one? A farmer divides his land between growing two crops, wheat and oats, which I've handily pictured for you. 
To increase production of one, he must reduce production of the other. We call this, by the way, competitive supply. What would cause the farmer to increase his supply of wheat? Press the pause button, take a moment, have a go, please, at question number three. So a farmer, of course, many farmers have a choice of which crops to grow. Uh, not every farmer does, but in this situation they do. They can grow two crops, wheat and oats. What would cause the farmer to increase his supply of wheat? Well, I sus suspect the answer here is... D, that increased efficiency in the harvesting of wheat would reduce his costs and therefore potentially increase his profits at each price level. So therefore that would be the obvious factor. Subsidy to produce oats, of course, would shift production the other way. A unit tax would increase their costs and lower the supply of wheat. An increase in wages in all, for all farm workers would have no, no difference in the relative return from supplying wheat and oats. We have one last question for you, and it is to do with joint supply. So take a moment, please, and have a go at this question. Soil liming material is a byproduct of sugar production. Therefore, sugar and soil liming material are in joint supply. What would be the most likely effect of a decrease in the demand for sugar on the equilibrium price and quantity of soil liming material? Joint supply question. Have a go. Press that pause button. So in the production of sugar, soil liming is supplied. It's a byproduct. And the more sugar that's produced, the greater will be the quantity of, of uh, soil liming in the market. Well, we're told there's a fall in the demand for sugar, and therefore you'd expect sugar production to contract, and therefore you'd expect the byproduct supply of soil liming to go down, so the quantity of soil liming material will decrease. Other things being the same, if the quantity of soil liming material is in shorter supply, then you probably expect the price of that to go up because, uh, whoops, <laughs> I've got this wrong. Uh, here we go. Let's put it to change to see. As the quantity of soil liming material goes down, then you'd expect the price of soil liming material to go up because it's now in scarcer supply in the market. My apologies for that little slip there. There we go. There's an overview on the theory of supply.